Hello, my name is Brian Dick. I am a software engineer, and this is my YouTube tutorial series on the HackerRank Interview Preparation Kit. Today, we're going over arrays, and in particular, we're going over the left rotation problem. The problem is as follows. A left rotation operation on an array shifts each of the array's elements one unit to the left. For example, if two left rotations are performed on an array one, two, three, four, five, then the array would become 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. Given an array of n integers and a number d, perform d rotations on the array. Return the updated array to be printed as a single line of space separated integers. So we don't actually have to worry about the return type, and we don't have to worry about the input format or any of the constraints in this case. However, what we do need to worry about, oh, one thing that is nice, D is always going to be less than or equal to N. So this is one constraint that matters. And I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but these two do not really matter to us. Um, what else? OK, so basically, all we need to do is we need to write a function that reconstructs an array that does this rotation. Now, the most naive and simplest way of solving this problem would be to set up a for loop that goes d times. And each time we go through this for loop, we'd be constructing a slightly different vector, uh, since we're using C++ vectors, what our container is here, uh, that would be simply starting at 1, going all the way through, and then adding 0 at the end. And then we do this d times, that would create d rotations. And then the final array that we get out of that would be a return. This is the simplest to implement programmically. However, obviously, that is very inefficient time-wise. There is a n space and n time solution that we will be using instead. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into coding. So uh, first, we're going to be using the vector's size. Well, no, we won't. OK, so since since we have this constraint here, that d is always less than or equal to n, which is the size of the array, uh, we don't have to worry about having more rotations than going through the array an entire time once. So if, if this was not listed as a constraint, what we would then have to do is we'd have to do int, um, oops, int, dd, double d, uh, is equal to something like d mod a dot size. The reason being is uh, this will give us the actual number of rotations, because anything beyond the size n, so like if n were greater than, or if d were greater than n, what would happen is we would do a full rotation after n is equal to d, we would do one full rotation, and then after doing this full rotation, we would then be back to the beginning and it would just go on as normal. So yeah, there's that. Um, but since D is always going to be less than or equal to, we can completely ignore that. What we do need to keep track of still is we need to have a vector of ints. And this will just call ret, since it's a return type. And uh, we will return ret at the end. So how we're going to think about this, if we go into this problem, and in this case, we have d is equal to 4, we could simply go to the fourth index, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and pick out this as our starting point go until the end of the array, which in this case would be just be grabbing this, then go into a for loop that will start at the beginning of the array and iterate up until D. So we're going to use D as where we start. That's going to be our starting index, so to speak. And it is also going to be uh, our ending point later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to call, uh, we're going to have a, just make this more readable. We're going to call start index. And this is completely unnecessary, but we're just putting this here to be perfectly clear what's happening. And then int, um, 
int current index is equal to start index, because I'm going to use a while loop here. So just to make sure all the logic makes sense, we're going to say while the cur index is less than the size of the array. Oops, I'm just going to go ahead and make another int size. So while cur index is less than size, we're going to be adding to ret. So ret dot pushback um, a sub cur index. And then we're going to increment cur index. So once we finish this, we will have the portion of the array that we are wanting to have front loaded. That's going to end up being at the front after performing our left rotations. And now we want to just get whatever's left over. So to do that, we're going to do a for loop going up to our start index. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than start index and increment i. Here, we're just going to say ret dot push back a sub i. And then at the very end, we return that array. So let's go ahead and run it, make sure everything compiles fine. And there we go, we passed the three sample cases. And notice that this should be plenty efficient because we simply are doing a single iteration through the array where we start in the middle and we end in the middle. And uh, we are only using a single uh, vector. Therefore, this is going to be n space and n time complexity. So let's go ahead and submit code. And there we have it. Super efficient, super good code. This will work every time. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. If this was helpful to you, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, make sure to ask them below. Uh, subscribe for more content. I'll be uploading a new hacker rank uh, interview preparation kit problem every single day, walking through it just like this. And if you have any suggestions on how to make my videos better, please leave those below as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.